What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys an updated and easier way to bring our Adobe Illustrator files into Cinema 4D. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as you can see, I have Adobe Illustrator opened right now and I'm just using the Warner Brothers logo for this tutorial purpose. But if you look over here in my layers panel, I have everything separated into separate layers, which is important here. So I have the W on its own layer, the top layer, I have B in the middle layer, and I have the shield in its back layer. Now you can have everything in one layer if you want, but for me personally, I like organizing everything in a separate layer because that gives us more flexibility once we bring it into Cinema 4D. But from here, all we're gonna do is go up to save the file. So I'm gonna go up to file, save as, and then I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. I'm gonna keep it as WB logo, click save. And then we have this Illustrator options right here in which we want to keep it at illustrator 2020 in the past for anybody that's done this before you know that we usually went down to illustrator 8 but with the latest version of cinema 4d i believe this started in version 26 we're able just to take straight illustrator files no more backwards compatibility saving or anything of that nature and so again i'm just going to save out adobe illustrator 2020 which is the latest and greatest i'm going to click ok and then from here, we're going to open up Cinema 4D. Now, it's pretty simple. We're just going to open up our file explorer, click and drag our Adobe Illustrator file in the Cinema 4D like so. So let me get started by opening up my file explorer here. And I'm currently on my desktop. I'm just going to take the WB logo, just click and drag it into my Cinema 4D here. And for the Adobe PDF Illustrator import settings, I'm just going to leave everything as is. And I'm going to click OK. So now you can see we have the WB logo here inside our viewport. I'm going to click shortcut H on my keyboard just to center everything up. And there we go. So we have everything in here. We didn't have to do anything, no separations or anything of that nature. And we do have a couple of parameters that we can play around with over here. So if I go into my objects panel and I actually click on this right here, you can see, let me scroll this up a little bit. If I come down here to objects, we have a whole plethora of different attributes that we can play around with. And so the first one being height, and this is going to be the scale of your object in which I like to bring in like a simple geometry just to try to see what kind of scale we're at. So if I scroll back here in Cinema 4D, you can see that our logo is extremely small in here. So I'm going to come back down here, the height, maybe let's try 400. So I like something like that. So I'm going to delete my sphere and then let's carry on to the next attributes. So we have layer offset in which if I click on this, this is the reason why I like building everything out in layers inside of Illustrator. Cause you can see it's going in order of operations if you did want to separate this out. And so if you remember my W was my top layer, the B was the middle and the shield was the back. So if you want to do any type of little separations like that, that will come in handy. Spread, same thing. It's going to extrude these out a little bit so you could kind of play with these both just to kind of get them where you want to be. I'll show you guys how we can manually do this ourselves, which I like to do. And then the last option here we have is extrude the depth. So if I scroll this out, this is basically adding some more depth to our extrusion here. And if I do a layer offset, you can see that it's adding that depth to all the objects that are in there. And now for me personally, I would like to go through and maybe change these out per object instead of doing everything at once. And so if I hit the hierarchical button, it's gonna separate all of our layers for us like so. So if I come down here to where it says hierarchy, I'm gonna click on this and you can see that it jumped up for whatever reason, it changes the offset for our axes there. But if I come back up to my objects panel, click this down you can see now it made a null and it has all of our layers in here and they're even named the same way we had them inside of illustrator so that's another thing if you're really in the organization if you name your layers in illustrator those will come over as well and so from here basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll these down and i'm going to take these little green boxes here and i'm going to pull them out of everything just so i have these objects as is and there we go so now if i pull these out let's say i pull this one you can see this is going to be the b this one is going to be the shield and the top one should be the W. So I'm going to hit control Z because I want to make everything back to where it needs to be at the start. And I'm actually just going to label these out. So I'm going to call this one B, this one W and this one shield. So I'm not going to go fully in depth on a ton of stuff here. I'm just going to basically pull these letters out like so. And if I scroll in, you can see we have like no type of bevel or anything on these as well. And so this is why I like separating everything because I can make like a separate bevel from my letters than I have on my shield. So if I come back down here to my shield, 
come down here to cap I can actually just load a preset here and let's say I want to do basic round and we have like a basic round bevel in there but it's really combobulated so what I'm going to do is actually hit extend shape so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click on height maybe let's make this one to start and then for my size my bevel size let's move this down a little bit maybe like 0.3 something like that and you can see that we're getting our bevel on there and everything and i mean it's more up to your interpretation or how you want to do everything but this should be very familiar with anybody that's used extrude objects before so i just wanted to give you guys this quick tutorial on how we can now take native adobe illustrator files in the cinema 40 i mean basically as easy as just clicking and dragging into cinema 40 and playing with the attributes there but no longer do we have to backwards compatibility save it for illustrator 8 which is a big hassle but i'm glad they made the update so if you did find this helpful make sure you leave me a comment down below subscribe to the channel if you're new leave me a big thumbs up helps with the algorithm and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i catch you guys in the next video i see you soon take care what up what up Wimbush here